Ah, bliss. Don't you love the sound of my beautiful fan? Well, in this video, I think it's going to be very different today because normally I tend to do toy views which are normally at the carpet or the floor but this time I want to do it in the bed because I just feel like I just love to feel the fan and to be quite honest sometimes I like it cold but most of the time I like it very hot but in this video we're going to take a look at some cigars of course there are two cigar products via the flip out origami company of course which is in fact both of these involved with flapping birds one is a British wildlife collection toy and the other isn't and both of these birds have two things in common they have seagulls of course but they also have seagulls but they're not breeding so what's up so let's take a look at this one here first this is the non-breeding common seabirds 12 pack it's a flip out origami one of course flapping birds toy yes this flapping birds toy looks pretty amazing indeed Open me please, that's very important to say, it's purple on the top, and if we take a look at the back here, you can start to see the very, very cool detailing that's in this toy. I mean, just look how majestic this is, and there's a couple of common terms here. I mean, how are these non-breeding plumages there? It looks like, how is this a non-breeding plumage? I mean, are they like in breeding sort of colorizations? And I don't know, maybe you guys can tell me, but this is what the back of the packaging looks like. And you get a very cool looking seagull who looks like he's wearing a mohawk with feathers on the top as a tuft. Well, let's just say these are feather tufts, you know. Another seagull on the top, but on the right hand corner, of course. A couple of starfish. Pretty cool, isn't it, eh? And we're gonna go and get this putter out. Oh, yeah. To be quite honest, this £14.98 toy is quite amazing as I'm coming to do the unpacking. And um, I'm not sure if there's any other toys that will be, you know, categorised as 2020. Maybe from sometime in the future we might start to see some early releases of some Halloween toys. But we might also start to see some early releases of Christmas toys like we did in that video which was all about Christmas in July. That was pretty amazing. And this is a lesser black back girl. We all know what these are. Well, it's got dark brown patches of course, eh? Very common for these types of birds, eh? And it's very, very nice. Same with this one here. But I don't know if they're realistic. And we just had a jump cut recently, but these birds, they had a very... They have a very impressive wing beat. I can tell you guys, eh? It looks pretty nice. The eye looks excellent. And the detailing on these birds, they just look pretty amazing, don't they? And we'll take a look at this one here. This is a black-headed girl, but if you know what it is, it's actually a non-breeding plumage of the black-headed girl. And I need to do a jump cut because my feet are in agony. Well, I have to stretch my legs. This is the non-breeding plumage of the black-headed girl. And if I give you a closer-up look, you can tell why it's a, uh, a very interesting non-breeding plumage black-headed girl. is because, compared to the breeding plumage black-headed girl, of course, and it looks pretty nice. It's got a red beak. I'm pretty sure, and I would presume it's an adult version of the bird. No name, disappointingly enough. Uh, it's got two of these brown lines, which indicate that the bird has been, uh, it's, you know, it's finished, in a sense, I would say, I suppose. It's been roosting, or has been outside of its breeding area, which is pretty amazing, I suppose, eh? It's a very common-looking bird. I mean, uh, you don't tend to see these often during April, May, and most of June. I think it's because of the breeding season. And in July, I don't think you tend to see this bird most of the time in July. But I think in August and late July, this bird is very, very, very common, I'd say. And this one here is a, speaking of common, this is a common turn. With a bit of, it looks like a rosy, to be honest, it almost looks like a roseate turn. Because look at the colour of the beak there. Looks grey and orange. And if we take a look at the feet there, it looks pretty much the same. But if I flap it, looks pretty cool, doesn't it? And we'll take a look at the other one here. That one there as well. I suppose it's got the double swallow tail feature. And that's actually pretty missing in many of the flip flap toys. There's no... If I take a look at this one here, I suppose I... I can't see any detailing which relates to the swallow tail feature, which is very strange, I suppose. But let's take a look at the accessories that it came with and I'll show you what it is actually I might do a jump cut just to get this fish a lot more closely perhaps maybe if I do have some time though well I'm just gonna have a bit of a closer up 
on this fish. It's got a bit of detailing on the face. Looking on the other side, what can you tell? Or what you can say? Or should I say, what can you say about these fishies? Apart from the fact they look like wishy-washy from that goddamn Pokemon video. Uh, or anything else though. The goddamn Pokemon games are quite. A couple of prawns, or shrimp. Maybe they're called krill. It's got little pincers on the front here. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're just feelers. Because I'm not that quite sure. And then you've got two different variations of some starfish here. This one there is the orange one. And that one there is the red pointy one. And the orange one is blunt. Very nice detailing on these little critters. What do you think? It's actually quite a very nice one indeed. And I'm after jump cut again because one of my legs are itching with agony. Well, to be quite fair and also to be quite hilariously honest, I'll probably say that this video is going to have the most jump cuts in a video like this before. And that would also explain to me why often my body can get a very sort of, un well, let's just say, I can't remember. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, my body can be in a bit of an unhealthy state when it comes into the way. Sometimes when I, you know, I do exercise. I know I do have a walk in the park, which is right outside there at uh, Manifold Park, which is right in the vicinity right there, of course. But to be quite honest, I think most of the time I just slack. But I think I often go to the park or sometimes I do dancing, of course. Anyways, to finish off this video, this is a non-breeding black tail girl twi pack, so it's only about one pound cheaper compared to the other part that we've just looked at, which was the British Wildlife Collection non-breeding common seabird twi pack. And this is what it looks like. We've got some pictures of some seagulls. I mean, where's the Japanese style? That's why I'm quite curious though, because black tailed girls are one of Japan's eponymous of all and notable of all seagulls, I can tell you guys, eh? As I've shown you in a previous video before. And there's some fishies there. Let's take a look at what these guys are. And I'm actually quite curious if the detailing on this toy is going to be proven to be much better than what we had with the British Wildlife Collection toy. And we just had a jump cut, so I might do it now. Well, let me take a look at these fishies here first. It's quite interesting. It's obvious to say they almost look like ghosts for the fact they've got this sort of ooh sort of appearance, eh? I mean, look at the faces. They almost look like ghosts in the way they've been designed. It's obvious, isn't it? I often, you know, I literally just say, you know, they look like ghosts, but who would say so? I don't know. Very tricky, I'd suppose, eh? But we'll take a look at this one here, which is obviously a black-tailed girl, but despite its name, the tail is actually grey, which is very misleading its name. And to be quite honest, uh, this is a very similar sort of design bird. And if I show you closely, if I move the camera like so, and I need to do a bit of a jump cut. Oh, jump cut! Finally we've got it, of course, eh? Uh, the black-tailed gull, it's just the same design as that lesser black-backed gull I've looked at. And similar to that lesser black-backed gull, actually similar to that lesser black-backed gull, hopefully I don't have a sense of dyslexia, there's no name! I mean, what's up with flip-up toys just lacking names and licensing info these days? It's so, so rubbish. Don't know, maybe I should cheapen these prices down from maybe the next year or so because I'm just having a very big, honest fear that the Blazers would literally just take over from me. Who knows? Maybe I'm just being a bit hypercritical about what people wear. I might do a very full video from next year's summer when I leave school, perhaps I could make an apology video from next year because I haven't worked out my um my own readiness for summer 2020. I mean, we're still in 2019, but I haven't worked out for summer 2020, and that's what I'm actually planning for summer of next year. It's actually a pretty nice looking clicking sound of that bird, eh? I think that's about it. Well, to be quite honest, sometimes this toy can be basically the bottom of the bone because I think that can also be one of the biggest wild cards uh, perhaps so maybe the flip flap origami flapping birds aspect can get it through if it is a very top seller of course and yes my camera just fell which is a bit of a bummer maybe I should take out that little stand and just replace it with something else I wouldn't use a selfie stick otherwise it would just deteriorate easily it's gone well, with the fan roaring in the background, of course, 
cooling me down. Let's take a look at what we're gonna have throughout the weather, of course, eh? Look at that! Birmingham is gonna be 23 degrees Celsius tomorrow, baby! Yeah! No rain indeed! Woohoo! I don't know why I'm cheering, but I'm just glad that you initially thought there was gonna be flipping raining all day! Look at that! Birmingham is gonna be freaking dry! Woohoo! Holy mackerel! It is so flipping weird. But when we come towards Thursday, <laughs> dun dun dun! Oh yes, Thursday unfortunately is going to be a very unsettling uh, day. And if we take a look at what's going to be happening from, oh let's just say, from Friday of course, it's actually going to be a, a bit tad cooler because we've got a bit of a breezy sort of feel. And I don't think this is also another major reason. I think this could. Uh, let's just find uh, what the major reason why heat has became fairly scarce throughout this week. But maybe next week there are some cool remedies here. Monday is going to be like 22 degrees Celsius. Tuesday, uh, while I'm pretty sure there's showers here because we've got low pressure, and then Friday, high pressure retaliates, but then low pressure retaliates again. I have no freaking idea on why the weather in the UK has gone absolutely haywire, in a sense I would say, I suppose. Now why is it so, so different is the fact that low pressure has been, well let's just say, it has been intruding across parts of Spain and France and Italy and Portugal. There's been so much of that low pressure here that's actually condensing temperatures in the summer recently in Europe. I think this is just like two weeks ago, just after a massive freaking scorcher, which had a very massive temperature, you know, during that heat wave. It was like 45.9 degrees Celsius in um, somewhere around southern France. Maybe you guys can tell me, but I might probably put a comment down below, and if you see that comment down below, you know what that place is. Okay, so let me just scroll down here. I'll scroll to the right, so we can see what's happening, why... It's not getting warmer from next week, and we'll examine why. We've got low pressure coming in here. Friday, high pressure is starting to build up, I suppose. Eh? It's coming through on Saturday, Sunday, and it continues parts of Monday. It's just about it, eh? But why I think there's actually a big problem why it's not getting the amount of heat that we all want is the fact that the high pressure is actually situated towards... Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, what it should actually touch is the land. So if it did touch the land, or basically anything like that, if it did touch parts of, you know, Northern Africa, such as like Morocco or Mauritania or Senegal, it would have easily penetrated the heat towards the Mediterranean part of Europe and then into France and then heading straight to the UK and Ireland. I think it will be prudent to let the audience know when will this high pressure start to basically fade away? I know it will be fading away on Wednesday, but what I'm actually referring to is when there will be signs of another British summertime heat wave during school time. Maybe I'm just wanting the kids to ditch their jackets away. And I'm just thinking, oh, you know, maybe I'm just being a bit harsh here in the way I'm just saying, but I mean, you guys, you don't have to get angry with me, but I do. <laughs> Anyway, there's not much I can say in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's been fairly boring just talking about the weather, of course, for a long time. I could tell you guys, I, it has been chronically amazing. I know for the fact that I don't know if there's any more plans I could do for the future. <laughs> but, you know what? That's what the internet's all about. That's what having fun's all about. And I could tell you guys, I, it is amazing. As far as my legs can stretch, maybe it's time for you guys to to basically subscribe to my channel. Hopefully I didn't have it, you know, any sense of dyslexia, eh? Wait, did I? <laughs> Hopefully I didn't have any sense of dyslexia, right? Did I actually have dyslexia? Because I was just talking gibberish just now. <laughs> you, oh, you guys thought you'd be just thinking, oh, you know, you just think I'm just talking gibberish, am I? Yep, I'm just talking gibberish. How weird is that, eh? Nothing worse than just basically just sitting there doing nothing amongst the flip out toys that's next to my bed. Anyways, I think that's about that in this video. I'm hoping that he can come back sometime in the future. As always, 
Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video. Bye for now.